Hey guys, welcome to Travel Fields and welcome to another episode of TF Feedback. Today we're going to be talking about nailing exposure. One of the most important things you can do while you're filming is to expose correctly. Not only does it look better to expose properly, but it gives you a much better starting point for your post-processing, especially for color grading. If you've overexposed too much, you're not going to be able to get those highlights back and correct them. And if you've underexposed too much, you're not going to be able to get those shadows back. And from what I've seen watching these films, a lot of people tend to overexpose by quite a bit. So let's get into a couple films. The first one's called Iceland, it's by Harry Thomas Wilson. And this is a really cool little video, I think. I really like the pacing and the editing. The song choice was really good. It just fit the visuals and the editing really well. The color grade is really nice too. I actually like this quite a bit and it fits the mood and feel of the video. But you're overexposing a lot of your shots. And this makes some of them look a lot worse than they should. And the color grade just doesn't stick quite as well as it should. And I get it, sometimes it's really hard to see what's going on on that little little LCD screen is really bright outside, you have no idea really what's going on. But take the time and make sure you're exposing properly. There's a lot of shots where you probably weren't able to get the highlights back in post, and it just would have been a lot better if you would have had a little bit more information in the highlights. But great job overall, I really like this edit. Next we have No Place Like Home by AB Films. And I really like how you're telling the story here about this island that you grew up on and you're telling all the amazing things about the island and why you think it's the best place on earth. I really appreciate that you're trying to really tell story through this film. It is a bit too long in my opinion, I think. It could be a lot shorter, a lot faster pacing for the editing. Remember, less is more. But again, your exposure is kind of all over the place. Some of the clips are really nicely exposed, and then some of them, again, are just overexposed, and you're losing the highlights in a lot of the shots. So how do we get good exposure while we're filming and keep it consistent? Well, the answer is, Histograms and waveforms. Every camera pretty much nowadays has a histogram and that's a really good simple tool to gauge your exposure. A histogram basically just shows the values from the shadows on your left side to the highlights on the right side and in between is all the other luminance values. So with the histogram, if you see that the values are kind of hitting the left side, that means you're underexposed and you're losing detail in the shadows. Or if you see that it's hitting the right side of the wall, that means you're overexposing and you're losing information in the highlights. So ideally you would have all the information towards the middle, kind of like a mountain in the middle. So it's really easy and quick to look at the histogram and say that whether I'm underexposed or overexposed. But an even better tool is the waveform. And unfortunately, a lot of cameras don't have the waveform, but you can get monitors that have them. And that's what I usually do. I'm using the small HD 502 because it has waveform and LUTs and all this good stuff built in. And the reason why the waveform is so good is that it not only shows you the values of exposure, the shadows on the bottom and the highlights on top, but it also tells you what on your image is overexposed or underexposed. So if you have, let's say, a light or the sun on the right side, it's going to show you that you're overexposing in that area. And that's okay because it's the sun or it's a light and it's supposed to overexpose. So it's super handy. If you have a person in the middle, you can tell where the exposure values of that person are or what's underexposed. I almost feel like I'm flying blind if I'm not using a waveform. You can also use a waveform in post while you're color grading to make sure you're not crushing the shadows or the highlights too much. It's a really handy tool and I use it all the time. I cannot express how important it is to use either a histogram or a waveform while you're shooting and editing. It just helps so much. Otherwise, you're just kind of guessing whether or not your image is exposed. All right, so my pick of the day, it's called Caracao 2016, and it's by Leonard Hartmans. And in this video, we have a lot better exposure, which means that the video clips are gonna look better and the color grade and everything is gonna look better. I really like the intro, I like the narration, I like the little cool things you did, like with the editing and the matching of the clips. And I actually like the intro way better than the rest of the film. I think the intro is super good, whereas the rest of the film, it's kind of okay. It doesn't quite fit. There's something that's a little bit off. And again, it might be that there's not enough faces or close-ups of those people that the intro is talking about. Or it might just be that the end needed a little bit more narration to kind of tie it all together. But overall, I really like this video and the exposure was really nicely done. Great work on this one, Leonard. So there we have it. You need to nail your exposure. That's a really easy giveaway that you're doing amateur video is if you're always overexposed. 
That's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Feedback Fridays. As always, if you want feedback on your film, make sure to follow me on Twitter, tag me in the post, and use the hashtag TFFeedback. Guys, enjoy the filmmaking process and go get some of those travel feels. Mm -hmm.